In day three of Microsoft versus the FTC, the CFOs take the stand and the FTC lets slip a pivotal number. David versus David or Goliath versus Goliath because they're both really big entities. Whatever you want to look at Microsoft versus FTC, when the big dogs take the stand, it's always fun to see what sort of information comes out and leaks out and everything else. And today, the CFOs really took the stand. And by CFOs, plural, there were actually two from Microsoft. And you might be saying two, Brad, but yeah, we'll talk about that here in a second. So day three has wrapped up and tomorrow we'll have a nice wrap up of all the judges questioning because the question Questioning is going to help us see which way the tides are turning with the judging uh, and the ruling of the court case as this epic battle comes to a close. But first, let's talk about today and we will roll that B-roll. So today, the CFOs, and I say CFOs because Microsoft has multiple business lines, but the overall CFO, Amy Hood of Microsoft took the stand and also the Xbox CFO, Tim Stewart also took the stand. So let's dive into the thing that the FTC accidentally let leak while all of this was going on. So the FTC, FTC while uh, going through their motion said that the Game Pass would need to grow by 2 million subs a year to offset the Call of Duty exclusivity. So that's a pretty big thing here. Uh, Microsoft, like when they're trying to model all this stuff out and saying like, how fast does Xbox Game Pass need to grow to really justify what is going on here? And their model said they needed to grow at about 2 million subs a year, which seems like a number they should be able to do if they're willing to spend $70 billion on a transaction. But that 2 million subs should give us some sort of baseline. And this is like the, one of the things that's going to be crucial going forward. Let's assume that Microsoft can close this deal. We already know that 2 million is a figure that Microsoft is pretty comfortable with when they're modeling. So as we start to see this transaction close, if it, assuming it does again, now, as we watch the go forward strategy, we need to see if uh, Game Pass starts to grow in a meaningful way that Microsoft would expect to help justify it. Other super interesting figures that came out during this, and this goes back to kind of sort of the ethos of arguments from both sides. Microsoft said that the Nintendo Switch did impact the price of the Xbox Series S. Now that is critical depending on how you look at it. Because as a reminder, the FTC keeps saying, you should not consider the Switch as part of the gaming console ecosystem system from Microsoft. It is Xbox versus PlayStation and that's it. And Microsoft's on the other side saying, look, you got to consider the Switch. And so this is how it impacted them because Microsoft's point was that if a consumer is looking just to play Minecraft or FIFA, the Xbox Series S is the product that Microsoft would actually expect them to buy because that's considered more, I know someone's gonna say FIFA is not a casual game, but it's not the first person shooter demographic that you typically would see buying the Series X. So if a consumer is only looking to buy, play Minecraft as an example, the Switch is a viable alternative to the Xbox model, right? The, 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 con, the gaming consoles. And so Microsoft is claiming in court that the reason why they price the Xbox Series S so low was that it would then effectively compete with the Switch. If a gamer is saying, look, I just want to play Minecraft. What's the best way to play Minecraft? Oh, if I want to play it on the go, maybe the, maybe the Switch. If I want to play it on a console, it could be, hey, the Xbox Series S enters the conversation. And so that is a, a crucial point uh, just throughout the narrative of is the Switch a console or not that should be compared. And Microsoft very explicitly calling it out. Uh, Tim Stewart, while he was on the stand, a reminder that's the Xbox uh, CFO, said he really wants Xbox to become, uh, he doesn't want Xbox to become oil. He I'm paraphrasing here. And what he meant by that is that oil is considered like a legacy fuel, right? Electric would be the future. And so when you look at Microsoft's business in the gaming sector, console is the legacy business and mobile is electric is the new model. And that is what Microsoft keeps hitting on time and time again is that they don't have a play in the mobile space. And so Xbox, if you see that headline, Xbox doesn't want to become oil, that is truly what they are meaning. Interesting information about Minecraft throughout the testimony is that Xbox is actually the smallest platform where Minecraft is played. Uh, PlayStation is roughly double the size of the Xbox platform, and Nintendo's platform is twice as big as PlayStation, so roughly four times as big as Xbox, and you can kind of see the scale there. And that's why Microsoft makes the justified argument, in my opinion, that the Xbox Series S should be priced at as com a comparable to the Switch because, hey, Microsoft's own IP, which Microsoft own verbiage said is they're probably their most profitable IP we have. If it is not the most profitable, it is like the top two for sure. 
that they have to consider where people are going to play it. Microsoft makes more money if you buy it on the Xbox than if you do on a Switch. And you might be saying, Brad, but how is that? They didn't have to pay for the hardware. Well, first off, they have to pay Nintendo a royalty. Second of all, the opportunity cost if they're not going to be able to get you to pay for Xbox Live or Xbox Game Pass. And so that is just something to make it... Um, you know, just to kind of leave out there and make known in the Minecraft community. Also, things that came up uh, from Tim Stewart's own emails in conversation with uh, Phil Spencer. He said he wanted to make it clear that Microsoft is willing to take a financial hit to boost Xbox Game Pass subscriber growth. Now, this is important. Why is this important, Brad? Because the FTC is trying to establish the narrative, even though Microsoft has sworn testimony that, hey, we will not pull Call of Duty from other platforms, they have considered it. And they do know that if they pull it from other platforms, that maybe it, not maybe, that it will see growth. So the, the narrative here is that if Microsoft finds itself backed into a corner, it's like, oh man, we really need to drive growth this quarter and Game Pass subscribers, we should pull Call of Duty from PlayStation is the argument that uh, the FTC is trying to make by establishing that. Whether or not that's true, and despite the fact that Microsoft has said time and time again, it would be financial, it would be a huge issue financially to pull it from PlayStation, given that we know that what, PlayStation made 800-ish million dollars in revenue from Call of Duty, that would be a massive financial hit for Microsoft, and that's why they cannot do it. Other interesting things that came out from uh, while Tim Stewart was on the stand, Project Denali, and, you know, Denali, the big, huge mountain, is the co the official code name of Microsoft trying to acquire Activision. So if you see Denali pop up anywhere, that is officially relating to this acquisition. Uh, Microsoft CFO Amy Hood, now Amy Hood is the overall CFO of all of Microsoft, also took to the stand. Not too much interesting came out of it, but there were a couple notable things here. Uh, first off, she says, she said very clearly, she wants Microsoft to increase Xbox operating margins to match other Microsoft businesses. If you're not familiar, familiar with what margin is, that is how much mic money Microsoft makes after all costs are accounted for. And it looks like Microsoft's margins in the Xbox uh, org are lower than other segments, which kind of makes sense, right? That's why Microsoft is saying Game Pass because software as a service or SaaS, uh, which is what Game Pass Ultimate is, typically has higher margins, which is why they say judges on that. Also a little interesting, you know, factoid side note for, for myself and maybe you, if Microsoft wants to spend more than $500 million, they have to get board approval. Now, first off, $500 million is a massive number to begin with. Uh, that might be the material amount that Microsoft has determined that, hey, if you spend more than $500 million, that's material. But imagine being able to have the authorization, such and Adela could sit there and say, I'm going to spend $400 million and I don't need to get board approval. That is bunkers, in my opinion, absolute bunkers. So that is the nutshell version of day three. Again, not as saucy as some of the previous days where we got a bunch of leaked documents. Um, but, you know, when you're trying to wrap up what the FTC's argument today was, it was really just around how they could take a game from their catalog and make it exclusive. They talked about how Bethesda, how some of the titles that Bethesda was going to create would be cross-platform, and then they pulled them back in-house. And that how Microsoft could take that exact same strategy of a title that was on another platform and pull it in-house and screw over the competition. That was kind of where the FTC was going with that. But Microsoft was emphasizing today the opposite, that financially, they can't afford to do that. Like Sony makes too much money, right? Minecraft is twice as big as it is on Xbox. So pulling it off of Sony is actually really going to hurt them. Same with Call of Duty. It is big on PlayStation. And by pulling it off, it's financially going to hurt them. So that was the Microsoft sort of counter to the FTCs. Like, hey, you guys have considered this because that was the crux of this. Yesterday, we heard a lot about how the Switch, is it a console uh, competitor? That was one argument from the FTC. Today is really focused around like, hey, you guys could screw over the competition at any given point because it would benefit your bottom line. And Microsoft's like, well, I mean, t maybe, but that's not our plan. And then the FTC comes back and says, but you're doing it with Bethesda. And so, yeah, it's less, again, the point here being, it's less about specific titles, specific Game Pass. Actually, we're not hearing cloud all that much from the FTC. They're much less concerned about cloud than, say, the EU or the CMA. That has been a, a, an ongoing narrative if you will, that that is not the primary issue. And the FTC is just looking for an entire block. Now, if they do not, if they, if the FTC issues an injunction, which doesn't technically kill the deal or not the FTC, but if the court issues an injunction says, look, this needs to go to full trial or more information, uh, Activision has already sort of signaled and Microsoft will be there too. That like, Hey, 
this deal is dead. So when the judge makes their verdict, when the courts issue the verdict, this will be the deciding factor whether or not Microsoft continues or not. If it gets blocked initially or temporarily, then Microsoft or Activision is just going to be walking away, which means Microsoft will owe Bobby Kotick and Activision $3 billion. And so there you go. There you go. That wraps up day three. We'll have a wrap up tomorrow of what the judge says, which way the judge is leaning. So make sure to keep it subscribed here because only BS on this channel is me.